All right, so in a previous video, we established the, or A, I should say, we established a circuit model for the induction machine. And so what I want to do now is we want to take a look at the idea of power in terms of space phasers, because we're going to be using, um, obviously, the circuit that we've developed for the purpose of uh, control. And one of the things that we control when we control uh, machines is power, uh, or we balance, I should say, we balance the power, the speed, and the torque in the machine. So we want to have a good understanding of how all these things are related. So let's imagine for a second, you have, uh, let's call this the induction machine. So this is IM, we'll call it the induction machine. And you have three terminals entering this induction machine because this is a three phase device. We'll call this VA, VB, and VC. And you have three currents, let's say uh, IA, IB, and IC. So this is IA, IB, and IC. Now this is physically what's happening. And then let's say you have, I mean, you'll obviously have some power that you develop. And the power will be complex in general, P plus JQ. Now, if we want to write this power P plus JQ, we can say P plus JQ is equal to 3 over 2 V times I star. And you would have seen this definition in any introduction, electrical engineering um, analysis type of course. So in this case, P is the real part. So we'll say 3 over 2 times the real part of this product. V times I conjugate. And on the other hand, Q is the imaginary part. So this is the imaginary part of V times I conjugate this. Now, in the context of what we're talking about, we're talking about the induction machine. So, and in the induction machine, there's the windings, and then there's the losses, and then there's the EMF sources, and we called that the speed voltage in the previous video. But what we want to think about now is how much of the power that we actually draw from our source, whatever source gives us VA, VB, VC, how much of it actually makes it to, or how much of it actually turns into mechanical power, right? So, of this total power, P plus JQ, let's say we're talking about the induction machine, some of it is going to be lost in RS and RR, which were the stator and the rotor uh, winding resistances, and some of it will be used to charge the inductances, and that's not active power, that would be reactive power, and the remaining power will be mechanical power, which corresponds to the power delivered to the EMF source. And the EMF source in this case, if you remember, we had an EMF source and we called it the speed voltage. And it was J omega R, well it was defined as J omega R, lambda R, and this was obviously a space phaser. So if that's the case, then we can we can we can try to work with a similar type of analysis as something like this. So let's say then that PM, so the mechanical power, is equal to three over two times the real component of the voltage. What's the speed voltage? The speed voltage is J omega R, lambda R prime, and again this is a vector, times minus I R star. I guess we can call it prime as well, because it was prime. And the reason it's minus is because the direction, or the, the, w the way that the current is defined in the, in the model, if you remember the current, so if the windings were off like this, the current is defined as going into the windings, as opposed to going out. And the polarity that we defined for the speed voltage, or the EMF source, was in the opposite direction of that, so it becomes minus. Anyhow, the minus sign is not, it's, I mean, it's a trivial detail. So what can we do now? So I mean, if we think about for a second, if we think about for a second in general, let's, sp let's, let's speak in general terms for a second, let's say the real component of J times alpha plus J beta, like this, is equal to the real part or the real part or component, whatever you want to call it, of alpha J minus beta, which is equal to minus beta which is actually equal to minus the imaginary part of the initial thing that you had, alpha plus j beta, okay? 
Now, using this anal this analogy, I guess, and looking at this expression that we have up here, you can conclude the following, or you can just multiply it out and simplify it if you want. I mean, this is a sort of shortcut that I've taken. But if you multiply it and simplify it out, you'll find that PM is equal to 3 over 2 omega r times the imaginary part of lambda r i r star prime, I guess, should be i r prime, because we have prime in the actual circuit. And we know that PM is equal to TM omega r. We've established this from our discussion before. So power is equal to torque times angular velocity. And so then you can say that your, that your torque, TM, is equal to 3 over 2 times the imaginary component of lambda prime and I r prime star, or conjugate, I should say, not star. And I'm going to call this equation 10. And the reason I'm calling it 10 is, I mean, it's the first equation in the video, really. But it's 10 because it's a continuation from the equations that we've seen in the previous uh, video uh, where we introduced the induction machine. So it, it's, it's just nice to keep the numbering going, I guess. And then if we ever need to, we can refer to equations from previous videos and then link them in the description if we need to. So what else can we do? We can also say, I guess we can simplify this a little bit more. So we can also... We also know that um, we also know that lambda r prime is equal to l m i s plus l r i r prime, and this is an equation from a previous video. So in the previous video, we defined this. Um, we we made the change of variables to arrive at this equation. Now, if you substitute this into T m above you'll find, and you, you substitute and you simplify and, and you do all that stuff, you'll get, well, why don't we just do it? Or well, let's do one step of it at least. So Tm is equal to 3 over 2 times the imaginary component of Lm Is plus Lr Ir prime times Ir prime conjugate. Now, if you simplify this, then you'll get Tm is equal to 3 over 2 Lm. I guess we, maybe we should use like a like a fancy little, that looks like a J. We should use some kind of fancy I, or maybe you can use I like that, because I don't want to confuse it for being a current. Maybe we can make it like curly or something. Then we confuse people, I guess. So let's not make it curly, let's just leave it as it is. Anyhow, you have Is. I R conjugate prime and these bright brackets are always the most difficult to draw at least for me but you have this expression here okay so now we have a way to control the torque supposing we can control the current right so you see that there's two currents that depend or that the torque depends on these two currents in this product so what have we done so far I mean, we, well, what have we done here? I mean, because this is the end of the video. So what have we done? We've established what the power, how we can, okay, not what the power, how we can represent the power in the induction machine based on these space phasors. And we've established an equation for the torque, which is actually a very important step. Well, this is not the equation we established. This is the equation we established. Maybe we put a box around that. So this is the equation that we established. And this is the equation that we will use later on um, to control the torque, because again, torque control is one of the most important things in motors. Um, torque and speed control is really all it comes down to based on power. And so again, what we did was we established the general idea of what, of, I mean, this is again, these are, these are introductory concepts here. So this part you should know how to do from your introductory circuits. This is a simplified machine model, and then we just took that and we, we again, the, I guess the key here is to apply this, and this is the speed voltage, right? And the reason we apply it to the speed voltage is because the speed voltage represents the mechanical connection, and that's the sort of EMF. It's it's, it's analogous to the uh, to the back EMF, or whatever you want to call it, from the, um, from the DC machine. 
which is which is usually defined in terms of k phi and, and other parameters. But in this case, we have it. Uh, it's it's defined in terms of the flux linkage as opposed to some flux constant. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Like and subscribe to support the channel, and we'll see you in the next one.